Hello and welcome to Eagle Eyed. I'm Bill Baker. This episode I have USA Eagle Tony Lamborn, who calls in from the bottom of New Zealand where he just arrived to prepare for the upcoming Mitre 10 season. We have a great conversation about the ups and downs of the recent Super Rugby season with the Blues and also what's in store for him in the future. Enjoy. Tony, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate this. No worries, man. Yeah, so um, where are you right now? I'm, in, uh, I'm actually in Invercargill, in the bottom of the South Island in New Zealand, um, just getting ready for the Mighty 10 Cup season um, with the Southland Stags. Now, have you had some uh, downtime here between the Blues season and this season? Yeah, yeah, I've, I got about uh, just over a week off. So I spent that with the family back home and just, yeah, just mucked around a little bit of hunting and, and um, yeah, just enjoyed the downtime. Talking about the Super Rugby season, so uh, earlier in the year when it was regular Super Rugby, um, your team was doing pretty good, and and then we returned to the new version of Super Rugby. You guys started off pretty good as well. You were strong, and then dropped a few matches there. What was the thought going through the team at that point? Because it's such a short season, you know, losing a couple of matches could really hurt you at that point. Yeah, I mean, um, we went into we go into all games like with the mentality of winning and um, and doing well. Um, I think when you play a team like the Crusaders, um, you have to be on your game the whole 80 minutes. I feel like we played really well in a lot of in, in, in big patches of the game, and then we just let the foot off the throat a little bit in, in some in some some tiny little areas areas, sorry, and uh, and they capitalised and, and scored. So that was just an unfortunate uh, loss, and we only just went down to the Crusaders and. Yeah, we were just disappointed with ourselves, and then uh, to then lose to the uh, the Hurricanes, we just haven't, we just just basically just had an off night, like just yeah. nothing was working out. Um, Baz was Baz got stepped and gassed down the outside. He got bunted over by Nani. Um, I mean, just just we, we weren't very consistent in that game at all, and we did show some uh, some some brilliance. Yeah. But then, yeah, it just wasn't just wasn't our night. I don't think. Yeah, and to lose that game, that's what really hurt us. That's what hurt our chances of winning winning the the, the thing, basically. Now you were getting some minutes, and you were taking really good advantage of your minutes. You're playing well to start that last game before the the final match. But then not to have that last match against the Crusaders, it must have been difficult for you and the team. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, it was very difficult. I mean, uh, I was supposed to be starting that last game. Um, against Crusaders, so I was pretty, I was pretty disappointed, um, to say the least, to say the least, really. Yeah, so for the for the season to have finished like that, it was it was pretty heartbreaking, pretty heart wrenching. Yeah, but um, that's just our world at the moment, and uh, we just have to adjust and and live with it. We're pretty lucky that um, we still have rugby here in New Zealand, uh, whereas in the moment, you know, back home in the US, we yeah, you guys were not not playing at all, so. Yeah. Very careful. There was one match in particular against the Highlanders early in the season that you got this brilliant pass from Barrett out in the wing. And now, as a loose forward myself, um, it was pretty rare that I was on the wing, for one thing, let alone get a ball out there. So, I mean, you get that ball, and you're already full speed. I mean, what's going through your mind? I mean, is it head down, charge that line, or are you looking for your options right away? Yeah, I knew there was quite a few meters still between me and the chalk, <laughs> so... Uh, I knew I wasn't going to outgas. I think it was um, uh, Mackay. His name's right. Ross, I think it's Ross Mackay. Yeah, I knew he was faster than me, so I instantly just thought, get 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 wide and just look for my options. And um, luckily enough, yeah, I just managed to to pull off a nice offload. And yeah, and it, was, it was a brilliant offload. And it was just it was so much energy watching the match as a fan. And of course, as as you said, I mean, there's no rugby elsewhere except for these past couple of weeks in the world, except for you know, you and, and possibly over in Australia as well, so to see that level of play. Yeah, I mean, and the, it was always going to be like that in terms of the the speed and um, the excitement of the rugby in New Zealand, like when it's just going to be New Zealand derbies playing, uh, New Zealand derby, all New Zealand teams playing each other. Um, it was always going to be some fast rugby, like a lot of accuracy and just some tight, tight um, scores. Right. Now, how long did it take you to really get back into the groove? Know, just have all that downtime, and it wasn't just you, obviously everybody, but it, may, it must have taken some time. Yeah, it did. It, uh, it definitely did. I think my 
I was, I struggled during the lockdown because I was just like, oh, well, like, what's going on? There's going to be no rugby. Like, I hear about all these other competitions being, like, just, like pretty much cancelled. Um, so here I am just thinking, oh, well, there goes our season and there goes my chances of, like, um, playing well, like, getting getting recognised and getting con- getting re-signed or anything like that. Yeah, it was it was pretty tough. And, and like, so it, it affected me mentally. I didn't really want, I didn't really feel like training. I didn't want to. Couldn't be bothered, yeah, getting out and doing the fitness that needed to be done, and and it showed when I got back into the, to the squad, I was quite unfit. Um, all the other boys had had been luckily enough to um, get the the training gear that they needed because they were still in Auckland, and I'd I'd moved for home to Hawke's Bay, so I wasn't close to getting any gym equipment or anything like that. And yeah, you could see that the boys had, they they were switched on. They they had a feeling that it was going to be back on, and so I just. I just stuffed up by just letting my mind go there and and thinking that we weren't going to um, come back to rugby. So right. and that affected my fitness, and then it affected my selection as well. The coaches they weren't they weren't happy with that. So um, you're not at the end of your career yet, but do you take that as a you know a lesson, you know, a learning point for, for you? sure? Oh yeah, for sure. Like in the future, I definitely won't go too cruisy before like a pre before pre season or something like that. The mentality I'd like to take into a preseason would be um, come in fit. Like don't don't go into the preseason thinking that they're going to make you fit, which they are. But it makes things right. so much easier if you're already like where you want to be, almost. Yeah. You know, um, and so yeah, I mean that's that's probably the that's what I'd do next time would just be yeah make sure i'm i'm fit i mean uh let's uh, let's, let's hope that there's not another covid uh-huh. lockdown so we have another preseason. but yeah so moving on to the minor 10 um uh, you've obviously made your move um you know, what's that move look like i mean that's so for the united states it's if i would go from new york to miami that seems like the distance i don't know the geography in new zealand it would, would that be does that sound right to you like a 20-hour drive if you drove or yeah, yeah, it would be about 20 hours, 15, 20 hours, something like that between there. Yeah, um, I didn't drive, fortunately. I didn't yeah. drive. <laughs> I flew down, uh, cool. luckily enough to get a, to be given a, a vehicle from the local dealership down here during the season, so pretty lucky there. Um, I just thought I'd come down nice and early and and um, get get settled in and, and get familiar um, with some of the new guys in the team and just make sure that, you know, um, that they know that I'm, like serious about the season and that I, I want to be winning games. So what is the status of the Motor 10 right now? Are we going to have a season? Yeah, for sure. We play uh, 14th of September, I think, it's the first game, something like that. Wow. Yeah, for, so not long now, two or three weeks. Right, right. And and for someone like myself, like I, I've seen Motor 10 on TV. Obviously, there's a lot of good talent in the league. Um, but I don't know what to compare it to. Is there a league out there that you can compare it to? Yeah, I'm not sure, really. I think... It's a tough one. It is a tough one. I mean, obviously you've got your Super Rugby, which is the the best of the best right. uh, here in New Zealand. Um, man, I mean, there's some really talented guys out there and young guys, yeah. and it's giving all the young guys an opportunity to come out of school and play in this competition as well. I would say it's better than the MLR in yeah. uh, in the US, but um, I think that the MLR is not far away from being at that level. Another two years, and the MLR is going to be pretty 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 awesome and then it, and then even from there it's going to only going to get better again absolutely uh and as for the future for you um you've spent some time in mlr already with nola and legion that's something down the road for you still coming back possibly yeah i think so i think i'll in, in, finish my career up in the u.s and um the thought of playing in the mlr and the mlr itself like even not even playing in it, it excites me i love I'm passionate about the USA and the USA rugby. I'm passionate about the MLR. Um, it's in my blood, and that's what I and that's what I intend on finishing up. And you know, who knows? Probably doing some coaching and stuff over there as well. Good, good. Now, uh, I'm out of the Boston area, and I know it's cold up here. But if you want an in with the Free Jacks, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, it's not that's as awesome, not as man. nice as, as San Diego, but uh, come on. <laughs> hey, that's right. Well, I've got your number. <laughs> so. Um, your experience, obviously, is is uh, is deep. You grew up in a nation that rugby's in the blood. Uh, when you're in the States or when you're with uh, the USA Eagles, uh, do you feel um, kind of like a mentorship to these players or kind of coach them maybe or mentor them how, how to really 
train, let's say? In terms of the training, I think the boys in the US have got that. Like they naturally know what it takes. So they know that they've, they've got to be in the gym. They know that they've got to be doing the extras. They know all of that stuff. In terms of the rugby side of things being natural, then, yeah, I think I've always been, you know, an open book. Like if you want if you want to ask me something, um, I'll never hide any of my, my secrets, you know, in terms of how I play and, you know, the, the little, the little um, cheats and stuff like that, you know. I'm always happy to, to, to let the boys know and, and, um, and help them in, in every way I can. You know, if I see, if I see some guy um, that's probably not, not quite doing something right, you know, I, I, I don't hesitate to, to, to just hey, say, hey, mate, I think maybe you could, how about try it like this, you know. But like you said, I mean, like growing up, rugby being in the blood, like, you know, it's not like America. You got your football in America. That's right. you know, or your, or your basketball and stuff like that. Um, but see, yeah, I mean, here it's just rugby, and it's it's bred into us, and it's it's drilled into us. So um, yeah, it's it's something that's quite natural to me. And you know, you see, I see some guys that, like Sam Wuching, for instance, who was he's a, a an amazing athlete. Um, he's fast. He's powerful. Um, he's smart. And when he first came to the squad, and you know, and he was still learning, the football was still, you, know, you could tell the football was still right. in terms of the way he was tackling and his mentality to just want to get up and just smash Somebody, and kind of. Yeah. And like I said, he's got a good head on him. He's smart, so he he learned really fast. He adjusted well, and now he's an amazing, uh, uh, great player, and he's only going to get better as well. So um, I, I'm I'm an open book. Yeah. Now for you, um, you're not done internationally, are you? No, I haven't. Well. I haven't, but I'm not. But uh, we we haven't got any rugby, so you know, this stage is just uh, yeah, it's just me playing over here and, and see yeah. So let's yeah, see what happens. I mean, um, definitely not getting any younger, and and the time away from family, you know, you, sometimes you can be away six to eight weeks, you know, and and it's just it get, it's getting pretty tough for my family, and I've got a I've got a four year old son and and and, a, and another one on the way. And uh, it, it's definitely pretty tough on my, my wife and my boy. Um, so there is a lot of things to consider and a lot, a lot of time to think about it as well. So, yeah, I mean, early next year, I'm sure um, I'll have a, have a good idea of what I'm up to next year in terms of international rugby, that's for sure. So another question here, just your post-rugby, obviously you're looking at coaching. you got your certificate, level two. Is that where you are now? Yeah. Yeah, and I know it's a tough question about asking what you're going to do post career because uh, again, you've still got years ahead of you. But you're obviously preparing, preparing by getting your certificate. But um, I mean, is there ever a thought of you know the family farm um, post career working on the farm, or is it uh, staying in rugby? Yeah, I think growing up on the farm, I think um, like I wanted to be a farmer and all that, and then and then I found this passion for rugby, you know, <laughs> and, it, and it overtook all of that. But I I see myself having my own farm. Um, whether it's the, my parents' farm, it, yeah, I'm not sure, but to having my own farm and, and, and not being too big and too stressful and too busy yeah. that I can go away and, and do coaching for a bit and, you know, I can have, you know, one of my, my nephews or, you know, one of my kids to then just look after the farm while I'm away coaching and stuff like that. So it's not, so, um, yeah, there's still, like you said, there's still a lot of time to think about it and I don't plan on, plan on hanging up the boots anytime soon. Um, body's still in good nick. I'm I'm feeling ready and I'm excited about this Mitre Cup season. Looking forward to turning things around down here. Uh, Stags haven't had a great uh, win record over the last couple of years, so I'm really looking forward to trying my best to make a difference and yeah, and, and trying to get some Ws on the board. Right. Well, listen, Tony, I really appreciate your time. Uh, good luck to you and your family, and good luck in the season. I mean, you're playing at a real high level right now, and and for USA Rugby, I think that's great down the road. Um, so stay healthy and I'd uh, love to talk to you again someday soon. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. All right. Cheers.